All right, here we go. Okay. Well, okay. So today I get to interview Thomas Blondet, who is my friend, producer, DJ, awesome human being. I'm so excited to do this. This is actually, um, I'm the creative director for the magazine. So I usually do behind the scenes. So this is really exciting that I get to interview you. And it's kind of nice that I do someone that I know. So thank, thank you. Thank you. Same here. It's easy for me too. <laughs> I'm like, ner I'm a little nervous. I'm like sweating. Oh my God. <laughs> drink some more tea. I know. Uh, maybe drink some water. I'm really, or maybe have a shot. Um, no, I'm really excited. And thank you so much for doing this. Thanks uh, for having me. A lot. So I guess I'll just get into the questions and you just kind of answer. And if I have anything to ask in addition, um, I will, but um, I put a lot of thought into these questions actually. And I made like- three I, I have the questions right here in front of me too. So. <laughs> I, made, I made like three journalists like review to make sure they were like worthy questions that made sense and sounded, you know, that would like respect what you do. Yeah, yeah. And so, so yeah. So I guess start off with, um, can you give me like kind of the beginnings of how all of this, how you started in music and whatnot? Yeah, well, I'll, I started with DJing probably, I don't know, maybe I was like 13, 14. Yeah. I mean, I got interested in music and like DJing and stuff like that when I was like 11, 12. But mm -hmm. I was like too young, like, you know, to get that kind of equipment. Like my mom was like, this is too expensive, you know, but, you know, for a kid at that age. How were you exposed, exposed to that? Like around like, a, like, just like just through friends or... Well, at the at that when I, at that age, I was living in South Florida, mm -hmm. and like DJing was like really big in like the late eighties down there in South yeah. Florida, like in my in Miami area. So there was like this radio station, Power ninety six, uh -huh. and they used to play Miami bass. They used to play freestyle. They used to play house music. Yeah. you know, like all the classic like electronic music that's like out and hip hop. So they had a DJ show that was on there like every night of the week. So I used to, you know, listen to that like religiously. So that's how I got interested. Like, oh, how are they doing, you know, mixing like that? How are they scratching like that? You know, because as a kid, I would always like, you know, just record songs off the radio, like on a tape. Yeah. You know, that's so when so I cool. saw and heard music, like, you know, being mixed this way and scratching, you know, I got really interesting, you know, or really interested in it. Yeah. So from there, you know, I, I, I got a job, I think, like at my next door neighbor's Chinese food restaurant. <laughs> you know, I think I was like 13, 14. Yeah. And I was doing the dishes there. And I saved up enough for like my first Technique 1200 and then a mixer. You know, I slowly started buying this like is, all the like, pieces a, of it. Through like, like from like just like really working collecting the pieces, working away from a young age and then on. So yeah, this, yeah, yeah. This, this, this is, you could say this has been like, you were meant to do this 100%. Yeah, I mean, even my mom would she used to age. say, yeah, like my mom used to say like, wow, if I knew that you were gonna still DJ as an adult, <laughs> I would have bought you all that equipment. Like she thought, you know, she was like, oh, you know, one day he wants a bike, next day he wants a skateboard. Now he wants a DJ system, you know? Yeah. Like, where did that come from? You yeah. know, so I was into like so many different, you know, hobbies or whatever, you know? So the DJing thing, she was like, oh, this is just too expensive. But as I got older and she saw that I was still, you know, she's like, all right, I'll get you some speakers now or, you know, like <laughs> an amp or here's some money for records, you know? You know, so, I remember like, gosh, I guess like in the early 2000s, I guess when I really kind of got introduced to, I guess, 18th Street Lounge, um, Buzz, uh, all those different types of music um, through my friend. And that's how I discovered you. I had a, my best friend, April, was like into like all that, all that whole scene. And she was like, have you heard, have you heard of this, this person or this person? I'm like, no. And we'd go and we'd go to these parties and I'd like fall in love with the music because of the way it made me feel. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It, and there was things like I did not, there's certain music I didn't like. I remember like certain drum and bass type of genres. Like I was not into it. I'm like, right, right. it's not my vibe. Right. But then we, 
everything like when we went to ESL, there was like I, every single time I felt to me like you could walk out and um, use that music if you're creating art because like that's what I like to do. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I'm an artist. Like I like to paint, draw, literally mood board, create, and and that's the kind of thing. And then when I and when I started, I actually used to go purposely when I knew you were playing. Oh wow! Because I like the music, and this is really before we even knew each other. And at that point, I remember like everyone was like, "Oh my god, DJs are like, I don't know, mini celebrities." <laughs> so right, right, like, right. That's kind of like <laughs> okay, you know. Um, and as you were young, it was so cool, but yeah, I just, I guess I wanted to let you know that too. Like, oh, wow. Thank you. I legitimately, my young adult years, um, I was like a fan. I am still a fan. Oh, Oh, thank you. You know, it's kind of cool. Just kind of watching all of us develop and watch you do that. So, well, I think that's the cool thing about like the scene too, is like, you know, I'm there expressing myself creatively. Mm -hmm. you know that's the way I look at it like I never look I like you know people that are coming to see me play like I mean like I consider you a friend you know like I'm playing music what I do and you're there yeah so I'm like you know I feel like I know you already just from that you know I was telling Joe do you my Joe my husband I was like hey guess guess who I'm interviewing tomorrow and he's like I'm like Thomas Blundet he goes oh man how's he doing I'm like I don't know I'll find out tomorrow and I'll let you know you know (laughs) So it's, it's pretty cool. I'm, I'm like, just really honored to do this and it means a lot. So, okay, Thank let you. me get me on to the next question. Okay. Um, also, just so you know, I did listen to this, uh, uh, Sea Suns and I listened to a bunch of the oh, cool. songs on there and I want, it's not on my list of questions, but I would like for you to kind of touch on that or something new that you're working yeah, on. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, for sure. And the sounds on that. That was my last. That was my last album that I released. Was it okay? Cool. Yeah, because yeah, it's really different. It's like yeah, it's like really down tempo. Yeah, but even it's just really chill. Each each song is a has its own um, energy. I guess it's the best word I can think of. Like its own right? vibe. Yeah, I like it. So, anyways, Thank we'll you. go back to it in a minute. Okay. Okay. Right. Um, who is your biggest? inspiration or like who do you have a lot of respect for um I guess personally and then musically I'll make it like a two oh wow I mean you know personally definitely like you know my mom like other family members that I have that you know I look up to my uncle my brother my sisters you know stuff like that that I trust their and value their opinion Mm -hmm. you know um musically there's so many, you know, but um, because, you know, Fareed is a big inspiration, you know, um, he's always been like very supportive of my music as a DJ and as a music producer yeah. and, you know, always provided an avenue or like a venue, you know, where yeah. I can play my music and DJ and be creative and play, you know, make the music that I want to make and you know just like really encouraging me as a music producer and as a DJ yeah you know as an artist right that's as an artist yeah you are an artist like and that's a beautiful thing like I I like know like you know you're so much more you know people say just a DJ but it's so much more you like you're really creating albums and music and sounds that and sometimes people people forget that kind of part of, of even when DJs do, they really, some of them are really cultivating their own sounds and they just think, oh, you just hit a record or I'm like, it's not records. Yeah, anymore. you just press play and but, then like, that's it. <laughs> it's not records anymore, it's a yeah, button, yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, so that's pretty cool. So, okay, uh, let's go on to next. What single, what single night out has been the most memorable for you? Either as a DJ or uh, when you're doing the production, the studio, um, or maybe both. I don't I think, know. Like, you know, one, one memorable night for me was when Sam Burns, Sam the Man Burns was yeah. playing the last night at, at uh, Red. Yeah, Red. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, that, like, that was probably, I would say, like, the only time that I ever cried when somebody was DJing. Like, the music that he played, the way he played it that night, um, 
you know, everybody was already emotional about Red closing too. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Pete, the way everybody was dancing that night, I mean, it was just, you know, that was like a very memorable uh, night for me as an attendee, attendee, yeah. you know, even yeah. though I DJed the night before <laughs> there, but something on Sam, you know, the way Sam always did something that, yeah. you know, he always created a vibe that like, yeah, you know, I never really seen anybody else do, you know, he knew how no, to create an energy that was in the room that, you know, you, it was something yeah, that you really it's like felt. So your, your feet hurt, like your legs were like, you just like, you're, it's like you, you could feel the music that you couldn't stop dancing, even though you felt like you were tired. I like, that's pretty much yeah, what yeah. I felt, you know, and you could just, it's just a really, his, he was really one of a kind artist. I guess I could yeah. best way to say it, Yeah, you know? So that's pretty amazing. Um, let me ask you this, like, do you, the fact that you brought up Red, it's, I go, I see, I'm not a good interviewer. I don't know if I, either I'm a good interviewer or not a good interviewer, I'm not sure. But you brought up Red and kind of that vibe and that kind of energy and the people dancing and the way they translate to music and feel it. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel like that's still now in like different club scenes or different environments or do you think it's, it's changed? I have my own opinion, but I'd love to hear what you think. Yeah, I mean, I think it just depends on like who you're with, not mm -hmm. so much where you're at, mm -hmm. you know, um, but the vibe from Red, I mean, you know, it, it was, it was like that time period. I mean, it was also like the 90s. I mean, house music was like peaking at that time and during that era, you know, and I think it was just like the timing of it was just like underground clubs, dope sound system, dope vibe, you know, dope music was coming out like nonstop, like back then, you know, like to go to the record store and then play it at Red that mm -hmm. weekend, you know, yeah. it was like, and, you know, fast forward to today, I mean, that same vibe isn't necessarily there because the music is so much more accessible now. Like yeah. there, back then, it was like, oh crap, what is this new? Like, I haven't even heard this before, right. you know? Like people are breaking records and song, you know, and music yeah. like right there. In yeah, front of you're me. right. Like now with like the internet and, you know, and all that, like music is so much more accessible. So it's not like, oh, I never heard this song before, you know, or, I mean, yeah, I mean, like there's songs here and there that you're like, oh, I never heard that. Obviously you're not gonna hear everything, but usually the good stuff that comes out, like, it's very accessible right away. That's true. Yeah, you know? you're right. You're right. I guess I so, guess the mystique, I guess, or the- Yeah, like, like just like that. Like, I gotta go, cause I gotta hear like kind of this, like whatever the new, this, I, I know that blah, blah has been working on something. It's gonna drop soon. It's probably gonna drop tonight if I go. Right. Or this is, or you hear this, you're like, what is this? You know, um, kind of thing. Like, I just, I remember like hearing other DJs playing, like going, oh my God, what song is this? <laughs> and like, oh, it's not out yet. And like yeah. now I'll be like, oh man, what song is this? It's like, oh, it, it's already out. Like, you know, just, you hold this just shazam, shazam it and, and, you know, and you got it, you know? Yeah. I mean, that doesn't happen in all cases, but, you know, most of the time it's pretty easy to find you know that's true we have i have a few coveted um pieces from um back in the day that we would just have like like old records that djs had left behind um you know so some of them were like actually like i don't know what the word is but it's like basically the practice record like not the like the the unpublished one or oh like a promo yeah, promo one, and it's like written or a uh, yeah, or a, like a, <laughs> a, a dub plate or an yeah. acetate, like the and test so. pressing, test pressing. So it's kind of cool. Like I'd be like, what, you know, we we have quite a few because there's been a lot of back in the day when we used to work in the industry, a lot of records left behind. Yeah, and I was like a hoarder. <laughs> I kept everything. Yeah, you know, it's like, funny that you're bring, <laughs> well, the fact that you're bringing up vinyl. Um, <laughs> I just sold a bunch, like all my whole collection. I have like maybe you really? you know, like a small collection left now, just because I don't have the space for it. Yeah, and um, I don't know. I just like I don't like. I'm not going to go to a club and carry like <laughs> tons of records anymore. Like that. Like I mean, as a working DJ, I mean, 
that was like one of the biggest blessings, I think, you know, leaving vinyl behind because it was like, that was a real hassle. Like you would get to the club, yeah. right? Everybody wants to help you in the beginning of the night. Everybody wants to get in free. Hey, let me help you with your records. Let me grab this. Let me, you know, blah, 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 blah. They yeah. want to get a free drink or maybe out of you yeah. or something, you know? And then the end of the night comes, <laughs> everyone vanishes. That's true. So now you're stuck with like <laughs> 10 crates of records to carry by yourself to the car at like three or four in the morning is, you know, it's not fun. <laughs> it's not. Yeah, you're you know? right. It's totally true. Everyone's so helpful in the beginning. And then when it's time, when it's time to roll out, there's no more helpers. Yeah, everyone's so. like, oh, who cares about it? No, no, you know? so go ahead and pack everything up and take yeah, a little I got in for free. I got my free drinks. I'm done, you know? Okay, well, let me keep going down with these questions. I know okay. I keep that. You just remind me of different things. And so I just like feel like the, the readers or even just people, if I end up being able to use this for and playing this out, I think there's so much... Um, meaningful things that come from you and so i just want to sometimes it, an, a question comes up to my mind so i really appreciate yeah that's okay that's why we're recording it too yeah <laughs> okay yeah. let me go on to the next okay but did i already do that darn it i already answered i answered asked my own question well not really in your own words what makes the dc music scene different or unique or and unique and i mean i where it's, I, headed, you, where it's what headed, happened where I think it's headed. headed and then one year from now and then five years from now and I'll remind you if you forget those parts but overall let's start with how is it different and unique I mean I, like DC like I think it's unique just because it's like a melting pot of like so many different people from different backgrounds and different ethnicities and you can feel the culture in DC, like from the music, from the food, you know, from all of that. And I think that all that combined, you know, and influences like the music scene, you know? Yeah. And cause there's music that I don't think I would have been introduced to if I didn't, you know, know somebody from like, from Laos you know, like one of my friends and like, and I hear like, I'm like, oh my God, this is so crazy. Like, what is this? Like, oh, this is like Lao Asian music, mm -hmm. you know, or, and then you, and then I start thinking creatively like, oh, that's a cool instrument they're using. Like, what is that? You know, mm -hmm. maybe I can incorporate that in something that I'm working on, Yeah. you know? Um, so, but like, as far as like the scene, like, you know, the music scene or the club scene, you know, there's so many different scenes. Like there's, you know, definitely a scene for like live bands. Mm -hmm. There's a scene for like DJs. Mm -hmm. There's a scene for like electronic musicians, yeah. you know? And then now there's like a scene on Twitch. Yeah. You know, where DJs and live you know, musicians are playing live, you know, yeah. live streaming on Twitch. And um, so I think, you know, since COVID happened, a lot of people went to Twitch. Mm -hmm. and especially like a lot of local DJs that I'd never heard of before mm -hmm. you know and I discovered them on Twitch and I'm like wow you're a local DJ you have like 200 people like live you know watching you live like, <laughs> yeah. like you know so it's weird like where the scene is going like I think like virtually mm -hmm. and then in real life you know IRL yeah. so to say where things are going, like, where do I think it's headed? I think, you know, streaming is like a big part of things. Uh, going out to the clubs is nice. Like I haven't been out for a while either. I don't know. Do you think it's even the same? I mean, like I'm personally, like, I, I don't even think, you know, I, I always search. I mean, I, I mean, granted, maybe it's, it's my art. I'll just make myself sound out. It's maybe it's my age. I don't know. But like, I'm always searching for something that kind of gives the feels of, I mean, truly somewhere between, um, not even a place, I guess the sounds, you know, of things like Dragonfly or um, 18th Street Lounge or even- So like, you know, like for instance, like Dragonfly, like I feel like in its heyday, like they were playing, and I used to DJ there too on yeah. Tuesday nights. And I was playing like atmospheric drum and bass. Yeah, yeah. You know, so 
where do you hear atmospheric drum and bass today? Like in DC, I don't know. But I don't know either. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't but, know if anywhere. I mean, honestly, when even when I go out to cities, it's it's not necessarily the sound, it's that vibe. The vibe. And you know whoever's DJing or performing the music, they have a love for music and it translates yeah, yeah. when they play it, right? And it translates to the audience because whether it's a restaurant or whatever it is, people are starting to move and dance and um, kind of like it creates this, this whole, whether your body's moving to the beat or you're moving a little closer to someone or next thing you know, people start dancing. It's just a natural type of thing that happened. I don't know if I've ever found that again. As, right. Um, I think in Europe, sometimes I feel like there's certain places that might have it a little bit. Um, but the music usually is music that I've already heard. Right, um, right. Or, or at least I the stuff know. that you like is what you, you, you've heard before, too. Yeah. And it's not I mean, new. It's not new, right. Well, I mean, I think like, you know, what, like what I was saying earlier about Red, it was just like the timing of everything was like perfect. Like we were the right age. We were in the right place at the right time with the right music and everything. I mean, at that time, like so much good music was coming out, yeah. Yeah. you know? And then ESL was at that time was like predominantly like down tempo yeah. and like bossa nova, like, yeah. you know, all eclectic type music that yeah. no one, you know, you weren't hearing any of that stuff around DC anywhere. No. You know, um, but today like can you find something like that like i don't know i mean come see me play and then you'll get that vibe maybe you know like, i don't know i don't you know but like everybody has their own thing yeah yeah well i don't know maybe there needs to be a place like that again somewhere well the, yeah. the new esl is opening is it at its new yeah at its new location i don't know when? if you want information on that Am I allowed to have information on that yet? Or is it still like in the works or is it? Um, it's still in the works. I mean, I think what I can say to you right now, I can tell you, you know, it, the new address is 1230 um, 9th Street. Okay. Like next to, next to Blagnan Alley, Northwest. Okay, yeah. So it's like right across the street from uh, the Washington Convention Center. Really nice neighborhood. I yeah. went over there. I checked out the venue. It's super dope. It reminds me of like, the original ESL, but really, that's awesome. New, you know, um, and I think they're shooting for opening date of May twenty twenty two. Ah, my birthday month. And yeah, so you should come in town school. for it. Yeah, the kids have finished school, and then I actually yeah. I'm going to be in DC for the whole summer. They're doing camp. Oh, cool! Uh, in Northern Virginia, yeah. So we're we're heading out of Wyoming for the summer. So yeah, yeah I mean, you know, you yeah. can you can check the website, you know, ESL's website, and yeah their That's social media cool. and stuff like that. Okay, well, let me go back to my questions here so I can be okay. an <laughs> interview person. So it's not like- But I mean, I think that's something <laughs> to talk about too, like the, op the opening of the new I ESL, know. You know, like that's you know, really cool. It, it'd be I'm really, really excited fun. about that. It'd be really fun if I could send, I mean, I'll go, but I, I would rather hire have one of our writers do the coverage for it. Yeah. And I just attend. But I'd love yeah. for, for someone to do the kind of the coverage on it and- um, yeah, you can send them to me, and I can put them in contact with the with the right peeps. I will. I will. I have. I'll have the right writer do it because otherwise, mine ends up being like a conversation like this, and I'm like, oh, then tell me. So, but I think maybe I should have. I may have a good. No, but I think this is good. I think this is good. I think this is good. So okay. it's more natural and more organic. Well, I've watched other people interview, and it's it's like so not like this. So I'm like, am I doing it wrong? But I can't help it. It's my personality. It's my yeah, sparkling no, that's okay. personality. I mean, these are all. Uh, I think everything that you're saying is fine. Yeah. Well, I think it's the transcribing part. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> so when you actually you, have to like, like take it and then yeah, I mean, it's definitely going to be a lot to go <laughs> over though. So I think that's the part where I pull your answers from the questions, and I've made this now. You know. But maybe I'll just, I'll just like, hey guys, this is going to be literally transcribed as is, and I'll do an awesome intro and then I'll post the video for you to watch. Yeah. Thank you. So, Thank you. okay. Let's see. What's the next one? Oh, I guess, I mean, I guess you gave me overall, I mean, one year or five years from now, you kind of 
answered it more or less. So let me see if you could be, okay, how about this? Which I think I know, I have a feeling I know your answer, but I want to hear what you say. If I think you, you do too. <laughs> if you could eternally be stuck in one, uh, in a one year's, a one type of music scene in one year, like a decade or a century, I would know, I mean, a certain time, which year would it be? I mean, when it would you, definitely be the nineties. I mean, that's like for, that's hands down. Yeah. Like I love the 90s. I love house music from the 90s. I love I went, you know I down tempo. With, yep, for sure. I think that I think that music that time like changed me. Like I went to tracks, like I was like really young. I was like 13. Um, like when like tracks like the last time before they were closed. Oh, really? Like, yeah, it was really long. I went to the club. I think the first time I went to tracks was in 93. It was um I was, I was like, still in high school. I was like 13. Yeah. And I was like, I remember I went with a bunch of um, older people and it was like the being there was the first time I was like, I hung out with break dancers. And so it was like, I went there and they were all going to dance, whatever. And it's the first time I saw a drag queen. Uh, so, it's you know, th it's funny that you bring up the break dancers. Cause like when I first like started getting into the scene in DC, I was going to tracks and I would make mixtapes and I gave them to all the break dancers. <laughs> Yeah. You know, because like who's better to give music to than yeah. dancers, you know? It's true. And from there, like, you know, I started meeting promoters and giving them tapes. So, but the dancers are always important to the DJ if you, if you ask me, you know? I agree. I agree. I try yeah. to be a break dancer. It's not very good. But I did like hanging out with them because they're just like, it was cool, you know? And if they like to the beat and you see this, like, just the things they come out with, it was. Yeah. Like, I, I, I think I tried the break dancer thing too, like when I was in sixth grade. <laughs> and then I was like, uh, DJing's more for me. <laughs> uh, attendee, attendee. And then later, like a cocktail waitress was more for me. And this is kind of where I ended up being. But right. yeah, not a very good break dancer. No. Okay. What sub, sub genre uh, you don't think gets enough detention? Um... I really like um, Moombatone. And are you familiar with Moombatone? No, that's I'm gonna wait for you to tell me why and what's it about. Well, it's a whole huge long story. But anyway, um, it was started by Dave Nada. Mm -hmm. Dave Nada's from DC area. Yeah. And it came out like maybe around like 2010 and it got like huge. Like, uh -huh. I mean, it blew up. Like, so basically, it was like they were mixing um, like Afro House and reggaeton together. Okay. So it was basically just like Afro House records that were like 130 beats per minute. They were just slowing it down to like 108 beats per minute. Okay. And that that was another, you know, genre or subgenre of who knows what of reggaeton and house music and all this and that. That it, it got a lot of attention. I feel like I feel like I need to hear it. Now. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely like dance floor, you know, type music. And I don't, it does, like, it's, it's not as big anymore. Mm -hmm. And I think it, it, you know, it lost a lot of its appeal or like attention. But I think it's some, you know, that, that type of music, I, I, I still like it. Yeah. Even though like, there's not that much new stuff of it coming out. But I think that's a, a, a genre that should get a little bit more attention. All right, well, I'm going to look into it now because I feel like it's but, like um, but genres that I think that are coming back in um, is trip hop. Mm -hmm. Trip hop, I think, yeah. is like making a big comeback. You know, down tempo stuff, like traditional, like trip hop, down tempo stuff, yeah. is, I think is making a comeback. Um, 90s house is definitely yeah. making a comeback. <laughs> you know, a lot of people are doing like 90s style uh, house where um, they're using like old school drum machines that, mm -hmm. you know, have like that 90s swing and feel to it. So I'm noticing that, which I'm glad that's coming back. Yeah. You know, and it's getting its attention that it deserves again, you know? Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's nice to see. So music is kind of, I mean, you could say music in a way too is a lot like um, fashion. It, 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 in a way, it, it reinvents itself but by recycling, right? In different, in different yeah. ways, but it's still... You know, I think when something kind of creates its own sound, it always comes back in one way or another um, later on. 
So that's cool. Yeah, because okay. everyone's like into like 90s fashion now too. Yeah, they so are. It, it kind of makes sense. Like, you know, 90s they house are. music is back. You know, I've been playing a lot of like 90s house now in my gigs and stuff too. I remember that that was probably, that's like, you know, it's funny because so between that, that kind of music I grew up, like I was in high school, but like my aunts and uncles were going out and that's the kind of music they would like bring home. And I'm like, what is this? And then I'm like, I feel like I need to be grown up and do this stuff. And I used to go, so I ended up going to some of the same places that we went to as I grew up, we used to hide because they'd end up going to the same clubs, but that was the kind of music. And it was, it's so, um, I don't know. I just like, I really love, like, I but think you had, genre gives you like but you know, Well, you had to like sneak into those places. I know. You were underage and yeah. like there was nowhere else to hear that music. No, there was not. Like you had, it was club music. Like that's yep. what it was. Yep. And it was not. I think that this music is not club music anymore. It's, you know, yeah. people are actually listening to house music in their house, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, totally true. You know, <laughs> You're totally so, right. You know, it, it, it's, it's changed in a lot of ways because like that music was like only heard in the clubs. Yeah. You know, if you yeah. wanted to hear house, you had to go to the club. Yeah, you're right. It's you true. Know? So now you can now, hear it. Now house. the kids don't have to sneak around. Like, oh, I want to hear that. <laughs> you know, this is a button to click away. It's really true. All right. Let me see what else. What's where am I the question? Oh, okay. What is something that bugs you about the music industry, whether it's playing gigs or producing? Um, you know. I can tell you what bugs me about the music industry and the club industry. Yes. Please. So, you know, the music industry, you know, it's just, it's not fair to artists at all. Like when it comes to like getting paid out or like streaming music, you know, it's just, it's not enough money to survive. Yeah. You know, even if you see like a million streams on a song, it's like, they're not quitting their day job for that, you know? Wow. Um, so. I always feel that, you know, artists are undervalued, mm -hmm. you know, in the music industry. Um, the club scene, you know, what bugs me the most is it's all based on hype. Yeah. You know, it's like a lot of these clubs that I won't mention in DC yeah. love to book DJs from out of town that I'm like, who in the world is this? But, oh, it's, he's from Berlin she's from here you know and i'm like well what you know like what's the big deal just because they're from berlin or they're from like somewhere overseas that like there's some amazing you know dj or whatever so yeah. it's just like based like uh, i feel like the dj scene is based on like a lot of hype not as you know how good the dj actually is yeah, yeah. you know and uh, there's so many so much politics in the club scene it's ridiculous yeah. ridiculous it's like maybe, high school maybe like elementary school yeah maybe that's what it is it's like you know when you go back to thinking about these other places it's a lot of times it was local artists and they have like I guess for lack of a better description like a cult following right people that are locally there they they appreciate you the way you sound the way you the vibe is you know what kind of party you know what kind of people that's going to go and so you look forward to going to that party every week because it's like you're creating like, i don't know a music family or a, a, yeah, uh, yeah you know a community you know, yeah a community of it and so i agree with you on that that does totally true now i'm gonna go back real quick to the part where you talk about um and it kind of touches on both questions i guess how artists don't get enough credit and and that is something actually that's near and dear to what we do as a publication because we celebrate all artists whether they're big small um the what matters the most to us is that they're passionate about what they do and they're talented um and they have a story they have something to share that's going to bring um substance to yeah. to either even if you impact one person or you impact 100 people there has to be something from it right so right. I guess in a way you're saying how artists now, even streaming, they don't get enough dues. Like, what do you think overall in the music industry? <clears throat> like, just like, I know there's so many, but like, could you give me an example of what someone like you who's streaming music and things like that, what would you like 
um, in terms of, or you would think would be something that you would want to advocate for? And here's your chance. More, to mo more money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you know, everything, you know, to make this music, you know, it takes a lot of time, mm -hmm. you know, equipment is not cheap. You know, yeah. if you want a good microphone, you want, you know, you want a drum machine, you know, you want software. I mean, all that stuff is like very expensive, you know, and a lot of these companies like it, like, oh, for instance, like DJing, mm -hmm. you know, it's like the music to buy for DJing, right? Mm -hmm. Like when I buy music, it's usually like a dollar 49 mm -hmm. each, like on Beatport, mm -hmm. maybe on track source, it's a little bit more like depending if it's like a promo, you know, so they charge a little bit more, a little bit less, but overall, you know, you're not spending $20 on vinyl for yeah. one song, Yeah. you know, which is what we used to do back in the day. Yeah. And now it's like the music is cheaper, but the equipment is more expensive. Yeah. Yeah. You know, to buy a CD, CDJ 3000, it's like $2,400 for yeah. one. Yeah. For one. Yeah. You're right. You know, and then you want a good mixer. There's another two grand. Yeah. And then you need another CDJ. There's another $2,400, you know? So, I mean, the equipment is like very expensive and, and for music producers, you know, all this stuff is expensive. It's not cheap. You know, you want a, a top of the line um, laptop, you know, three, four thousand mm dollars. -hmm. So you're not making back what you're putting into it, wow. basically. It's like the starving, you know? starving artist concept, right? You're doing what you love. Yeah. You're like, you're like happy enough that there's like food on the table if you can yeah, get yeah. to that even there, right? Yeah. So, like, what would there be? I don't know. Is there so this is a like, please, like, don't judge me, but is there a music union uh, or some type of no. group that? Because no. I know that, like, even now with writers, because this is where my industry fall, like, they're now because of all these different issues that come in and discrepancies or lack of pay for over hours, there is starting to have um, different guilds or different unions for the advocate for um, writers, for example. Right. Like is there something like that for the music industry or? Not that I'm aware of. I don't want to yeah. say, I mean, I know I just said no, but I mean, Maybe there is, maybe there's but not, not. They're not obviously taken seriously enough that that we know about it. Yeah, or, you know, music, right? maybe maybe it's catered towards more commercial music or something, yeah. you know? Well, the only reason I know about this one is because Vogue is Vogue, Vogue is one of the targeted um, companies, Condé Nast. And right. it's not targeted, it's not the nice word to say, but they're bringing attention to this. And so they're creating, they want to make a union. One of the, the sects, I guess, is, a union for Condé Nast to make sure they're being more fair, equal, inclusive, blah, 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 all those things. Right. So I guess somebody would be have to be like a bunch of musicians or bigger musicians from like Sony or signed with these kind of right. to really make an impact that would trickle down to more artists in a way. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I have distribution through uh, Universal. Yeah. You know, so I mean, I don't know, you know. So then all like, everybody's that's under them need to go yeah, and say, hey. Right. But everybody has like a different yeah. setup, you know, like, yeah. I mean, depending on how big of an artist you are, you know, you get treated differently. You yeah. know, whoever's bringing in the most is obviously going to get the most attention and get what they want, you know, and it's usually at the expense of the smaller artists. Yeah. You know. That's true. Okay. Let me go on to the next question. All right. Okay. I think I feel like we kind of touched on this, but I, I'm going to ask it anyways, just for good measure. Uh, what's your opinion regarding the difference between old school DJing where everything was restricted to vinyl and modern DJing where most tracks are never put on any physical medium before or after release? Well, this goes back to uh, like the, what we were just discussing yeah, I too. Know, that's nice. I feel like you know, but no, it makes sense. I mean, this is a good follow up question. I mean, if to you know to press vinyl or a CD is very expensive. Yeah. You know, it's not cheap mm -hmm. to press like you know two hundred vinyl. I mean, you could search it. I mean, I'm not sure how much it is, but I mean, you know, you're talking about a couple thousand dollars. Yeah. You know. 
and then you have to get it mastered. And then once you get all the vinyl and everything shipped to you, you got to pay for shipping. And once you get everything, now you got to ship everything back out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, you know, that's one thing that I think is bad for physical, you know, like the old school DJing. Yeah. Yeah. It was cool to have vinyl. I love vinyl. I have nothing against it, but as a working DJ, if I was going to carry and spend all this money on vinyl Mm -hmm. and I'm getting paid this much and the equipment costs this much and then the music costs that much, you know, how to, you know, it just, it doesn't even out. So, you know, but you know, if there's like an old, you know, between vinyl and modern DJing, I mean, financially, obviously it's a little cheaper to go with the digital side of things, Mm -hmm. but what I like about digitally is that it allows you to be more creative with the music. You know, you can make loops, you can do use effects. I mean, there's so many use cue points. There's like so many different things that you can do with the digital stuff that you can't do on vinyl. Mm -hmm. You know, you can repeat stuff, you know, you can do all this weird, you know, Oh, like this song is about to end. Let me loop that. And then I'm going to mix in another song. And I'm going to loop this. And it's like, now you're just like remixing, making your own song on the fly. Like, I don't even think that's considered DJing anymore. You know, yeah. now you're doing something else. You're actually creating something new. And, you know, you can have up to like four songs playing at once that it's looped with sampler, you know, playing <laughs> different, you know, like, I mean, it's yeah. like, it's so endless. So, I mean, the creativity part of it, of the digital stuff I like because it, it brings more, you know, like when you're playing vinyl, I mean, yeah, you can scratch and you can have doubles of the same yeah. record and loop it, but it's still not the same as digital. So digitally, I, you know, I have more fun DJing because I feel more creative. I yeah. feel very limited with vinyl because vinyl, not that many people are, you know, that many artists are releasing vinyl too. So you're also limited to, new music or Mm -hmm. music in general like digitally everything's available digitally you know pretty much everything is you know so musically i have like anything i want digitally but when it comes to vinyl oh wait i'm gonna have to order it i'm gonna have to go to the record store if they even have it who knows if they ever press this so you know you have to do a lot of research beforehand like with digital it's like oh there it is is. i'll buy it download it and then you know i'm playing it tonight I'm glad you said that because, you know, it's funny because some people, you know, who are like more traditionalist or kind of set in a certain time or whatever, they always, they, they kind of like say they prefer vinyl over um, like the way they do it now with, yeah. my, with your laptop and everything like that. But the fact that you, you've emphasized that there's a creative level of where you can mix and do different things and create your own sounds and literally on the fly almost, yeah. right? It's, yeah. it's, it's something I don't think a lot of, not a lot, a lot of people who don't understand the value of, I guess what technology, de- yeah. music developing into more of technology based, right? Yeah. That's kind of yep. cool. Thanks for, that's a good one. So good answer. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> good question. <laughs> All right. Um, great here's question. A, here's a great question. I like this question too. Uh, do you think um, having like exclusivity to a certain sound as a DJ or even as a producer, gosh, even as like a music genre like that you focus on um, affects, do you think this, like a DJ's ability to have a unique style, do you think it like kind of hurts to, hurts them or I don't know, kind of focusing on one? I mean, I think like everybody's different. You know, like for me personally, when it comes to DJing, I play all kinds of different stuff, you know? I'll play house music, then I'll play drum one night, I'll play drum and bass, you know? I'll play down tempo, I'll play some disco. Yeah. You know, it just, you know, it just, it depends at like where I'm playing or who I'm playing for, Mm -hmm. you know? But I think like having a certain sound of exclusivity, um, it obviously limits you to certain gigs, you know? So, so would you suggest it or not? If, I would if not I was an aspiring it. DJ, would you tell me, Natalie, yes, do it? Or would you say, if I wanted to be a successful I mean, DJ? But hey, you know, it, that. 
Well, it, it depends on like what your creativity is. Let's say I, I want to, uh, I don't know. I'm, that's not a good example, but let's say, I don't know, just maybe similar, similar sound, not, well, not, you have so many different sounds, but let's say more like down tempo or kind of that vibe, like the lounge sound vibe. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're, if you want to do like loungy stuff, then you're going to only play at lounges. Yeah. You know, you're going to play at like chill stuff, you know, chill yeah. events. You know, I, I opened for the Corporation last year and obviously I played like a down tempo set. <laughs> yeah. You know, I wasn't playing like a deep 90s house set, you know, <laughs> that, that I would play somewhere else. You know what I yeah. mean? But yeah. I mean, I know the vibe there. I, obviously, like the people that are there to see Thievery, like know yeah. what's up with like down tempo and like lounge music. So I, I you know, that's what I played. So I guess like the ability... Well, obviously you've done really well. So I'm going to answer, would you say that just being able to be more adaptive and not just having one sound? For me, it works good that way. Yeah. For me, it does, you know, um, some DJs it won't, you know, I don't know. I it, like, it, it's really up to you. I don't know what, what it is that you want to do, but yeah, you know, for me, it's like, it depends on what gig I'm playing. You know, like if I'm playing like at a lounge or something like, something chill and it's like oh obviously i'm gonna play like down tempo lounge stuff yeah you know but um if i'm playing at like a big club and everyone's dancing i'm not gonna start playing like down tempo lounge stuff you know <laughs> yeah. what i mean like yeah yeah everyone, so you, you feel just, the like, crowd you, know, you feel the vibe yeah, of you what feel it the is. vibe yeah so okay you know let me let me go into the next question which i kind of kind of feels like it's a redundant question now but oh well is having um, your own own style separate from other DJs out there even important? Even out there even important in modern DJing? Is my, wait because my iPad having just died. your own having your own style like just having uh -huh. your own style separate from all the other DJs out there is mm -hmm. it even is it important in modern modern DJing like mo DJing like to have your own style and your yeah. own, and everything? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean. I always talk about this to like with one of my friends who's a DJ too. And, you know, I'll give him all the music I have. Mm -hmm. And he'll give me all the music he has. Yeah. Right. And then we'll play the same music, right? Mm -hmm. the, the same stuff. And it's like, it will never come out the same way. Even though we have the same, you know, stack of records or music, yeah. it's still, it's not going to come out the same. Yeah. So, I mean, everyone has like their own unique style, whether, you know, you like it or not. Yeah. You know, but there's some, you know, in this day and age, I think like, you know, what, what stands out like with uh, being unique and being different is, you know, what I mentioned earlier about like the digital stuff. Like, you know, when I see a DJ or hear a DJ rather, you know, and they're like mixing, like, oh, I'm looping this song you know, and then I have the other, then they have the other song looping and then they're using effects and throwing things out. Like, that's really cool. You know, yeah. um, you know, there's some DJs that like to scratch where they're using turntables. That's cool. You know, mm -hmm. and they're using effects. There's some other DJs, um, like some soulful house DJs where they love using the EQ where mm -hmm. like, they'll take all the bass out, you know, yeah. and it's just the highs or like, they'll take all the highs out and it's just like the bass, you know, the low end frequencies. So, you know, everybody has like their own thing that they do what, what works best for them you know cool okay that's a good answer oh thank you that was a good question <laughs> okay um this one's lighter what's one track that never gets owed for you no matter how many times you hear it oh that's impossible i don't know i don't think i have one okay. songs do get old to me i'm like oh my god i can't hear that song. <laughs> okay <laughs> all right fine maybe it wasn't that light let's say one well, I mean, like i mean like usually <laughs> like some cheap like usually some cheesy stuff you know yeah let's see well i guess like for me i think it's always like um i think like it's like oh gosh i don't even know what mine would i can't be. think of like a particular song but there's or, some bad songs or, or you know what have an artist or or band or group or something like that how about that or genre let's let's something that you i mean there's like some country music that i can't you know country music i can't stand <laughs> some of it i can't stand 
Um, <laughs> there's some go-go, go-go, some go-go music I can't stand. <laughs> yeah. You know, because um, I remember when I moved here from South Florida and I first heard about go-go, I was like, go-go, what is like, you know, I was in high school. So yeah. I was like, I'm thinking, I was like, I thought that was like strip club music, like a go-go. <laughs> It was like, you know, go at a go-go or go-go music or yeah. the go-go club or go-go strip yeah. club or something or go-go dancing. Oh, yeah, I guess like, go-go you know? dancer. Yeah, like, I don't know. And then like here, when I realized that the term meant something else, I was like, oh, this is like a genre Yeah. of music. Like I had no idea. And then when I first was exposed to it, I was like, yeah, that's not for me. <laughs> All right, I mean, me I like the percussion and some elements of go-go, yeah. but as a whole, you know, yeah. There's some, there's some that's like the beat's okay, but I can see that where it's, it's an acquired taste. Yeah. I think there, there was like one remake of like a Sade song uh -huh. of a, of, that was a go-go version uh -huh. that I loved. Yeah. But I don't think there was much, I can't think of anything else really. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's go on to the next, um, can you tell us about um, your rhythm and culture label? Oh, kind before of, that, trap. Yeah. I don't like trap music. I don't like trap music either. That's what a genre I can say. I don't, I like, don't like it either. I don't like trap yeah. music either. Okay, so um, what was the next question? Rhythm and culture? Yeah. So tell me, can you tell me more about the label? Um, I kind of already know a little bit about it um, back from, from already. Um, and so did Joe, we kind of actually talked about it when we were talking about, you know, I was interviewing you and I asked him, is this a good question? Because I know about it, but I'd like for other people to know about it. So how it started the mission, or I guess like, kind of like what your goals, are, what you, your goals and Farid's goal, I believe is with you on this front, right. And yeah, where yeah. it's going, um, where well, so, are we hope for it to go? So we started the label or it was, uh, it was a record store on P Street mm -hmm. called Rhythm and Culture. Yep. It was a record store. And it eventually closed down. And then before they closed, they were like, oh, we should start a record label called Rhythm and Culture. And I was like, cool. So we started releasing records and I was producing stuff. Uh, Desmond was produced, Desmond Williams. Oh, he was producing God, some Desmond, stuff. Yeah. Um, Brown Tempo, which was... Um, Phil Brooks mm -hmm. from Avatars of Dub, Fareed obviously was releasing stuff on there too. Uh, and then from there, um, this band Second Sky from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, we started releasing some of their stuff. And now, what are we doing now? A lot of stuff too. Yeah, a lot. It's, 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 I was looking, um, I was like doing a little research. You guys like, it's grown since like a lot. And yeah. I guess in a way it's like, what's, you know, what's your, I guess, what are your, your goals? I guess, you know, I know it's going to be a lot deeper of an answer than just saying we're going to make money or we're going to be famous. Right. And right. I, would love well, I mean, that's not, I mean, that's the, obviously that's not the goal. I mean, the goal is, you know, to, for us to have like a creative Avenue, yeah. you know, to put out music and, you know, we don't have to deal with like major label, you know bs or other record label bs that we don't want to deal with you know so we put out our own music we have our creative freedom and it's not like somebody standing over our shoulder like, oh that's not a good song what's yep. the next one you know so it's definitely something for us to have a creative avenue to release our music and get it out there yeah and you know i've had um you know we try to help like other labels too because mm -hmm. we have pretty good distribution so we'll try to bring you know we've helped other record labels get distribution through us mm -hmm. um steven rubin from uh jack and the treehorns who's there like a local band and he started uh a record label which he's gonna hate me i can't remember the name right now can we google uh, it off the it. off the knob something off the knob records Oh man, he's gonna hate me for it's, this one. It's okay, I'll cut this part out. Let me see. I gotta look it uh, up. The knob off, knob off, knob off. Is that what it is? Knob the knob off, off music. The knob off music. Rip the knob off. Is that what it rip is? Rip the knob off. I thought I didn't know what the rip. I didn't know if rip belonged on there. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yes, that's rip, it. rip the knob yeah. off. Yeah, rip the knob off music. <laughs> so we help them with distribution. 
And um, so, you know, yeah, we try to help other local artists and we feature a lot of different local artists that we work with, you know, that we feature on our, on our releases. And um, not only local, but, you know, internationally too. Yeah. How you do know, you guys find artists? Like, how do you, Excuse? how do you, how do you find the right artists or the right sound or, or, or kind of like, as you guys, how do you come across, like, what's the process of, of doing that? I mean, like when we, you know, it's so many different ways. There's like, no, like specific, you know, some stuff comes through like social media, mm-hmm. you know, some stuff comes through from like other artists, like, Hey, I think you guys will make a good match. Um, our radio promo guy, he fixed me up with a couple of different artists before too, you know, to collaborate with. So, you know, it can really come from anywhere. You know, there's really no set process, but I, I would say social media is probably like the best, yeah. you know, way to meet other artists. What, you know. what are you, what do you guys look for? Kind of when you're, when, when you're, you know, it's, I know every sound's different. I know that's like, it's not necessarily what, but like kind of what do you guys look for in an artist or, um, or in a sound? sound I mean, like, we, yeah, I mean, we get a lot of like submissions for mm-hmm. music and, you know, usually um, it's not stuff that I think would fit our sound and our record label. So, I mean, the stuff that we, you know, like to release is like very eclectic you know, whether it be like down tempo or house music or trip hop or dub, reggae. Yeah. Um, You know, so, you know, we love all those, you know, different types of genres. Yeah, but like I could imagine a bunch of them, like, like there's not just like, you know, you can't take all of them, right? Like what makes, even if it's the genres that sounds that you're attract, you, you're, you're, you would be best suited for to represent or work with. But like what I mean, you you hear it, you know it. You you pulls them in. It's like you know it when you hear it. Yeah. You know, it, it's um it, it's not anything like specific that I'm like, you know, I'm not really we're not really trying to search down artists and like release stuff, mm-hmm. you know, for everybody. I mean, it, it's more of you know, a place for me to release my music. Yeah. without being worried about creativity and all that stuff and same for Farid mm-hmm. and same for Second Sky and Bill Speakman mm-hmm. who's another artist that's on the label and you know there's just I mean it's a competitive business and a lot of people I think a lot of artists look at the record label as like oh you're going to do everything for me yeah. You know, and it's like, no, I'm running a record label too. I'm just giving you distribution so yeah. your music's not sitting on your hard drive. Yeah. You know, um, so our main goal is like, you know, trying to release our own music, maybe get licensing, licensing for TV and film and commercial, which in the past we've been successful yeah. with. So that always helps the label stay afloat, mm-hmm. you know. Um, not much of that has come around lately, you know, yeah. because Hollywood was shut down. Yeah. COVID, you know, so they nobody was doing any licensing there oh. during that time period, you know. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's really just some, uh, you know, something for us to do creatively, you yeah. know. And if we make something from it, great. If we don't, you know, it's not going to kill anybody. You yeah. know, it's not going to hurt us. But it's it's more for just for like, you know, creative freedom. And Which creative is nice, expression. right? Because then you, you end up having like kind of an archive of things too. So later on, if something gets put, you have made something, you kind of like put it on the side for a little while and you circle back to it. It's like, oh, you know what? I have the best, I know what to do with this now. Like kind of, yeah, yeah. Thing, right? So it's, so it's basically being your own boss more or less, right? And yeah. And my own and r i get to pick what goes on or not, <laughs> exactly you know? but you know coming our, our our current project that we're working on now is like a, a a compilation for esl for like the grand opening of esl or the reopening yeah of esl and um you know it's featuring different artists on there myself farid um disco or disco uh disco rob um who else 95 north Mm-hmm. is releasing some stuff on there. Uh, Koshik is releasing some stuff on there. 
uh, Kamani Wilson and Chris Brooks have some on there and we're still waiting on more. Yeah. You know, I'm so excited. oh who else? Empresarios, I think, is releasing uh -huh. on there something on there too. Like a dub, like a dub reggae thing. So it's very good. Well, I'm glad the kids are out of school when uh this happens so I can be an attendee. Yeah, come through. Be have feel like listen to some good music and have some cocktails. All right, let me go. Okay, so I guess you kind of get a little bit of this, but is there any other new releases or artists that um, we should be keeping an eye out on or should be listening to um, with your label or with your own music as well? Um, definitely the ESL compilation that's going to come up, you know. Um, I am currently working on a bunch of projects. I don't know what's going to be done first. Mm -hmm. you know for release i haven't released anything since i released uh my last album seasons yeah. with steve yeah. steven rubin and uh so it's been like i think this month it's been like a year that i haven't released anything but i've done some remixes with um bill speakman mm -hmm. that we released last year oh bill speakman has a couple of tracks on the new compilation too okay. on the esl compilation um but yeah, I mean, other than that, I mean, like, I'm doing, like, uh, DJing, like, on, on Twitch. Mm -hmm. um, I've been doing more, like, videos of me, product like, working on music in the studio, yeah. like, on YouTube. I saw that. I actually so, yeah, I, I was going to ask you about that, too. Yeah, so, I mean, right now, I feel like I'm, like, in this place, like, creatively, that um, I'm just not ready. I'm not, I don't want to put anything out. I'm just, like, being very creative moment right now and experimenting and seeing what works what doesn't work and mm -hmm. i'm using drum machines and i'm using software and hardware yeah. combining everything together and just you know i'm even using like ipad uh -huh. for certain stuff so which is another like turned into like an instrument now and yeah. it's so the ipad which is crazy um but Can yeah you tell me so. a little bit about that like what do you mean like what do you like is there like like a like, like an like app sounds like an app with like yeah yeah so for like you know there's the thing like it's called like ios music uh-huh you know so you know you could find anything like under a hashtag of like ios music production yeah. or ios musician um but yeah there's different apps now on the ipad that i've been like getting you you know that i've been getting into and there, like there's drum machines, there's synthesizers, there's step cool. sequencers, yeah. like all kinds of stuff. I, I've been really getting into like the step sequencers and um, you can incorporate that from the iPad with, yeah. you know, the music that you're working on on your computer or that you're working, even that you're DJing with. So, so I guess would say, would you say just like producing and, yeah, producing music and things like this and creating music, it's it's like an ongoing learning process. It's especially oh, with yeah. everything being digital and with technology. So yeah. you're you're like always, whether you 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 have to research it or whatever. I mean, you're always teaching yourself and learning new things. Yeah. Like literally, not just like oh, learning new sounds or this. Like literally, learning how to use new technology. Yeah. To create. But I mean, for in, like for instance, like. I've never used like a drum machine uh -huh. on an iPad. Yeah. You know, because like on a drum machine, you can feel everything, you know, you can turn the knobs and blah, 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 blah. But then on the iPad, it's like, oh, wow, now I'm just tapping a screen and I'm touching a knob to turn it, you know? So it doesn't have the same feel, but you can tell that like, they're getting there. Yeah. And, you know, with the new M1 chips and everything that's in the iPad and the computers, like it's, they're so powerful. It's like, you almost can't tell it. You you can't hear a difference almost, you know, in, in, in the, the quality of it. But it's definitely a new way of using the technology. I mean, there's some people that refuse to use the new technology. Yeah. You know, I mean, whatever works for you. Yeah. You know, yeah. I like to, I like new, I love technology. I like to stay up to date with everything. It's inspiring to me. I like to create music in different ways. I mean, you can hold the iPad and tilt it and hmm. stuff like that and it'll manipulate sounds for you you know yeah. you, there's a camera 
on the app or on the iPad and the app will use your mouth. Like when you're like moving your mouth, (laughs) it'll like, you know, it'll change frequencies or change different effects. I'm like, whoa, I've never done that before. You know, like it's just a different way. And like, believe it or not, like different sounds like come out of it like that because, you know, the motion and the way that it's moving, it's not the same way as just turning it off. You know, you're going to get multiple motion that's like you know you weren't able to do before you know so it's the sound comes out like whoa i never heard that before like so all right let me see weird where else where am i and now i'm like oh where okay oh yes okay here i actually have the last question already i think okay you have been in the music industry for a long time and you're doing what you love what advice would you give to the younger generation that wants to break into the music industry um, on how to have longevity? Um, I mean, at least when you first start, I would always recommend everybody to, you know, start your own record label, do everything on your own. Don't, you know, don't look for a record label or, you know, think that something was going to come out of that. You know, I, I feel like that day and age is done. Mm -hmm. And you have a lot more opportunities to make a name for yourself and get your music out there, you know, with like YouTube, with Spotify, with Twitch, you know, all kinds of stuff. And, you know, I think it's best to do everything yourself. And if a big label wants to pick you up then you know, you can work it out from there. Yeah. But I think it's best for you to start like your own label and Mm -hmm. do everything, you know, as an independent artist, as an independent label. And so you have your creative freedom and you can do what you want. That's good. Yeah. You know. Yeah, on that note too, I know you said you guys are working on that ESL portion for the opening, the music there. When, when and ready, or if you're going to, as it's being released, where should we, or our readers and everyone should be looking out for it? Um, um, you know, you can check rhythmandculture.com. You can check um, my YouTube, youtube.com slash Thomas Blondet. You can check uh, my Instagram, which is Thomas Blondet, and uh, <laughs> Facebook, which is my name again. <laughs> yeah. Well, this, so, this, is, but, I, this is I need all every plug that you can have, so I can make sure it's all there. Yeah, so, I mean, I'll say I'll send you a link to my yeah. uh, link tree that has yeah. like everything on there. Yeah, well, I have your link so, tree. I mean, I have the link oh, tree, but it's good okay. to have. I don't know. I feel like it's, I should have this all listed just in case. Yeah. Uh, and if there's something that we don't know uh, where you can tell people to come take a look at it, where it's going to benefit you the most, like, just tell me and I'll, I'll do the plug, whatever you want. Well, you, tell me. You know, some, something that I've been like really pushing lately is my YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to get like monetized on there. So I need more yeah. followers. Okay. <laughs> so the more the more followers, the more views. But I mean, I definitely need more content that I think yeah. is more uh, interesting for people to want to subscribe to the channel mm-hmm. and uh, watch more. You know, so. Yeah. Well, I watch uh, you. I mean, watch you like creating music, and that was to me it was something that I enjoyed. Oh, really? So yeah. maybe some more of that stuff. Yeah, it's kind of like kind of having the the inner outs of something that you normally don't. Get most people don't see you know yeah. um and and then i think that touches on to be able to celebrate the artist and understand how much work or energy and time and talent it requires to do that you know it's a lot um, of time and that's the one thing i think a lot of people i think now with social media and everything always just looking so sometimes perfect or curated or and they just think this is normal um we've lost a sense of of sometimes when someone's creating something there's a lot more work behind the scenes than people realize. So that's something I enjoyed watching oh, cool. um, that you did a lot. So thank you. So I'll do more of that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, okay. Well, I think I did it. Um, Good job. It. <laughs> thank you. That was I'm awesome. excited. And now I'm going to work on transcribing all of this and um, awesome. 